So, what is the role of the treasurer, club treasurer? Collect the dues. Partly collect the dues. Any, anybody else? Marcia. Do a budget for the year. Budget of the year. Basically, you're the money guy. Money guy, money gal, you're responsible for the money. One of them, budget, you collect the dues. Why do you collect the dues? W what are these dues? And you also the club dues, if any. Let's talk about the uh, who submits the app first. This is a little bit different because each club does it differently. But who submits the app? The officer. Any officer can. Submit. Any officer can, but specifically the. It should be the treasurer, technically. Why the treasurer? So the payment. Payment? Uh, the treasurer is the only one who has the card. Exactly. And not only that, when the new member submits an application, they come in with, it comes in with payment. They have to be voted in first, but generally it comes with payment already. And who's responsible for payment? It's going to be the treasurer. They have access to the money. They have access to the bank account debit card. Does they submit it to those masters international? I do hope most of you will be familiar with the application. We are going to go over the application l later on today as well. Let me give you a scenario or an example which one of my clubs is going through, through right now. Next year, we are going to be celebrating our 80th anniversary. 80? 80, 80 years. Cosmo is celebrating 80 years next year. You guys are going to be invited. So, in order to pull this off, we're going to invite guests. We want it to be done, maybe have a re reception, a restaurant. We need funds. So, we need to do fundraising. Is this part of the budget? To your point, but the money we raised generally is just part of the budget. Well, yes, if you do it legally. <laughs> he, here's the trick, yes. Uh, of course, we, 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 we don't allow any gambl gambling. <laughs> what we do is we keep separate funds for it. Uh, here's another trick question, part of the budget. Can you pay member dues with Toastmasters funds? No. No, you may not. Aside from being, being in the Toastmasters rulebook, the members should pay for themselves. Any question regarding this one? Just that uh, somebody else can sponsor. Somebody else can sponsor, but funds cannot be released from their account. If we decide to have a party, example, a Christmas party, we want to decorate the room. Can we take that out of the budget? But there's something else which has to be done if you're going to be using club funds. Budget? Members have to vote on it. Did you know that? Oh, I got you. <laughs> I got you at once. So, if we are going to have any special event, let's say we want to create generic club business cards, which isn't in the budget at the beginning of the year, because the budget has to be voted on by members as well. We do it in the district. If somebody wants to have business cards, it has to be voted on by two thirds of membership. Membership those present in the room. Any questions so far? You don't have to have a quorum to do that? You need a quorum. That two-thirds, I believe, uh, is, is a quorum. No, f or 50 plus one. 50 plus one. Okay. I'm thinking about uh, the actually, larger. Okay. Uh, yeah. Quorum is 50 plus one. But it's 50 plus one of the members present. Members, pr yes. Uh, Only yeah. those in the room, the present. The club. Exactly. I have 
Garment six. There you go. What happens if the treasure is not available? They go on vacation or probably never hear from them again. They leave those <laughs> masters. This is a trick question. If you have a bank account, right? If something happens to us, fortunately, money goes to Uncle Sam, right? So in order to prevent that, what do we do? There should be two signers. There should be two signers. Usually that's going to be the president and the treasurer. There you go. Thank you, Marcia. When do we vote in new members? So we have a new member, they give their application. Officially, when do we vote these new members in? Once they put in their application. Your club may be doing at the end of the meeting. Other clubs will do it at the beginning of the meeting, during the business section of the meeting or announcements. Who here has done accounting? Do you know what the IRS stands for? <laughs> no. It stands for I'm really scared. <laughs> Which is why we submit a form to them so you won't be scared. And what is that form? The, the 1099 is for tax purposes as well. So we not Marsha. I want somebody else, to, not MBB. Uh, that the experts. Somebody else to answer this. Well, I, I can say that I believe the 199A is there you go. committed to the FTD. There you go. She, she. Not to the IRS. Yeah. It's the FTD. We don't turn anything. Yes, the IRS uh, submits it. That you're a non profit organization, but that's mm -hmm. submitted by CI. So. There you go. But that's the question. Who does turn it in to the IRS? Who does turn it in? To the FTD, the franchise. The franchise tax, right? Who, 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 who takes care of that? The treasure and how long does it take? Five minutes. Uh, pro approximately about thirty seconds. <laughs> you, you but you still have to submit the one ninety nine n. For the state. For, for the state. Yeah, so the treasurer receives this during January, right? Mm -hmm. And what would be the deadline to submit this? Day one. Hmm? I think it's the first of May. Fifteen, actually. May 15. May 15. Uh, same thing as corporate filing, because individual taxes is April 15. Corporate filing is May 15. What happens if you don't file it? You lose your tax exempt status. There you go. So the $45 we pay as membership to Toastmasters, we can't file it as. Or for this specific club, we can't use it as tax deduction. Now, how do we collect payments? From? From our members, let's say dues renewal or new members. They join Toastmasters, they renew their memberships. How do we collect payments? When you, s you, s you mentioned earlier that the form has like a PayPal button. Welcome. It has a PayPal button. Are you talking about an, you have an online form? Hi, come on in. What other options are there for collecting payments aside from PayPal, checks, and cash? We are in the digital age, so there are other options of collecting payments. Well, I forgot to mention, mm -hmm. we have two members that actually pay with cash. Cash, okay. And the old-fashioned money. A and then you put it in the bank account and, and all that, right? I was getting at, we all, have a lot of digital platforms right now. We have Venmo, mm -hmm. we have PayPal. I'm, how many are using Square? Okay, I would avoid Square unless there's a way to cancel any transaction fees it has. Does Square charge you any transaction fee? Yeah. Okay. There is a way around it. Yeah. Huh? Huh? If you hook up your bank account. I There's another know. way. With friends. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So if you're sending a payment, if you open a PayPal account, open it un under the club's name, 
that's fine. But if you're going to send payments, don't send it as a payment for a product or a purchase. Send it as friends and family. And since we're a nonprofit, we want to keep the costs low. We, we're not going to be charged any fees. You may be asking, what is better? Because there's a few options. We can use like PayPal. We can use Venmo. Apple Pay. We can use all that from our phones. Is there any better option in your experience? Cash. Cash is king, right? Mm -hmm. Cash is king, but it also takes time to put it into the bank account. Then you got to send it to Toastmasters International. All of them are basically the same. I personally prefer Venmo or not PayPal, uh, Venmo or Apple Pay because the transaction can be instant. If you open a Venmo account, for example, you already have your own account in there. The best thing to do is change your primary account or add another account which is the club's account. So if it asks for source of funding or deposit account, you can point it towards the club's account. That way it doesn't mix with you. Okay. Last thing I want to cover is the correct use of club funds. What do I mean by this? We've spoken a little about that earlier. What do I mean by correct use of club funds? You have something to say, MBB? <laughs> I'm <quiet>. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. According to the policy and protocol, club funds can only be used for things that benefit the members of the club. All the members of the club as a club. Right. Exactly. I've mentioned earlier you cannot use the club funds for paying dues, a membership dues. An example, example of this is, oh, we want to award a club member for doing or for becoming a DTM or completing a certain path. So the award we want to give this member for completing, let's say, a level three is we want to pay their membership for six months. Is that allowed? No. No, it's not allowed. Another example. Oh, one of our club members is working on a nonprofit. Like, we want to help them during this holiday season, so let's donate some club funds to this nonprofit to help this member. No. No, that's not allowed. Let's say I need club funds to print some charts for pathways. Yes. yes. Less. And why is that allowed? Because everybody benefits. Because everybody benefits. So it, you may be given, you're giving one plaque to one member, but everybody sees it. They're saying, oh, I can never be a DTM. And this guy, who I started with two years ago, is already a DTM, and I only have my competent communicator. So that should push me a little bit to do a little bit more and have that fancy plaque, MBB. Uh, kind of in the same vein, uh, uh -huh. we voted that every time someone completes a path, mm -hmm. uh, we buy them a new name badge. That works. Ribbons, ribbons are usually allowed, right? Mm -hmm. There's a cool new product on Toastmasters International website, which we spend a lot of funds on. It's the gavel pencil. Yeah. It's only for a couple cents maybe. But it's a good way to honor even just doing an icebreaker or just one speech. In summary, club funds, use it for the benefit of the club, of the members. It can be to an individual as long as you, you're cohesive or you do it as a whole. A few more things I want to address, uh, real quick. Uh, bank accounts. Problem right now with bank accounts is if we go open a bank account, they would charge us a fee. 
Has anybody here had that experience or have they done something to waive the fee? Okay, that's good to know because I thought U.S. Bank charges a fee. Um, they, they waive it. I know Wells Fargo, Bank of America, the traditional banks, they all charge fees. But I've also encountered some new banks which don't waive any fees. Capital One, Ally Bank, and there are a few on, on, online only banks, not traditional brick and mortar banks. If you go to some of these banks online, they charge your uh, they won't charge any fee. Good thing I like because I have Capital One uh, uh, bank account. They don't charge any fee. ATM fees, they don't charge any. If you go overseas, tr foreign transaction fees, they don't charge anything. So my recommendation is like a Capital One bank account and there's no brick and mortar. Just take a picture of your check. You can deposit and all that. Now here's a question for you. If the club closes, disbands, and you have $200 in that bank account, what happens to it? The district doesn't touch the club funds, but if the club closes down, it happens a lot with corporate clubs. They move to Vegas or overseas. What happens to the funds? It goes to the district. Who issues that? Or the signer, because the treasurer may no longer be there, treasurer or president or whoever's the signer of the bank account. Make sense? Okay, there was one more thing I want to cover. Um, bank statements. Why do we need bank statements? Paper trail. Paper trail. Audit or reconciliation. Especially if you're going to be, a, be in a big club let's say with funds of over $10,000. I know of a club like that, I'm not gonna name it because <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty good. If they have big funds, then you have to do a lot of reconciliation. What do I mean by, re this is a little bit more technical. What do I mean by reconciliation? You wanna make sure that every check you paid matches that of the bank statement bank account because if not s numbers don't lie you may be losing something and then that's you, that's where you're going to find out where did this money come from or where did this money get used it doesn't lie you're going to find out where it is okay some of you are self-explanatory but i'm we're going to go over it anyway because sometimes it confuses a lot of people so you give a new member or a dual member or just somebody who wants to join your club. We're gonna start off with the club information. Club name, we all know what the club name is, right? Club city, this is where you meet. No. All right, uh, any other questions? We're going to move now to the application. We're done with the bank statement. Um, club number. Usually, we don't know what the club number is, right? We always forget what our club, except for <laughs> us, right? No, I only know the four-digit ones. The four-digit ones, yeah. How do we find the club number? Club There's an easier way. Okay, so I did search for motivated Toastmasters. The first one, we're Whenever it says Toastmasters International, find a club. You see the number already, just click on it. And you have the club number here. 5522, five, Marsh, is that correct? Yeah. And that is what you put in the club number. Now we're going to look at the membership type. Let's do this a little bit more interactive. What is a new member? Right? Uh, what is a dual member? Somebody that's already in another club. Who's been in another club? Okay. Uh, what is a transfer member? Somebody transferred from another club. Okay. 
Somebody transferring? Are they a current member? I'm sorry? Are they a current member of that club or no? I, I heard that some clubs transfer from uh, members mm. from one to another. Maybe yeah. somebody moves, so the, yeah, the so keys have to be moved. Yes, as long as they are a current member. Okay. Um, good thing. We have to talk about fees as well. Uh, what is a reinstated member? And then they rejoin, exactly. I'm not sure why we have a renewing member here. Please I explain. Asked, after a conversation, and they said uh, once in a million years they ask a new, whatever member this is, to fill out and send them a new application uh, with that mark. Okay, so. I couldn't explain it. <laughs> you probably have to get another agent for that one. Okay. <laughs> So renewing member, just what Marsh explains, once in a blue moon, maybe somebody has to resubmit their application. They lost the records, that may be one of the instances, but we usually renew by giving funds, right? Uh, the previous club name, if they've been a reinstated member or a transfer member, what club are they gonna be transferring to? Uh, previous club number, I have that. Uh, member number. If they're moving, usually they don't know what their member number is. Right? There's a way to find out. Uh, with the applicants, the applicants' information. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Male, female, gender, that's, I don't think that's necessary to fill in, but these are the necessary ones. Last name and first name. Also pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you look down below, uh, one line below, the monthly Toastmasters magazine will be sent. This is the address. Organization in care of, what do I mean by this? Or If it's a corporate account and they're paying for it. Boston Scientific, for example, is a corporate club who, pay, who pays for their members. If they want to receive the thing in the office, if they are handling everything for all their members, then it goes directly to them. Because some corporations, they pay for everything, the sponsor. So that is an organization in care of. But as individuals, uh, address line, address is self-explanatory. City, state, province, country, postal call, name, and email address. Keep your email address consistent because this is where you get a lot of information and this is where we find you as well. Now we're going to go to Toastmasters International dues and fees, still on the first page. Is everybody following? Okay. The new member fee is $20. What is this $20 for? Pathways. Exactly. So the, the old, I, I'm, I'm not supposed to mention it, but it's to get the educational materials. You're a new member, you need educational materials. That's what that, that is what that $20 is for. Membership dues. People don't know really what to check on this one. Let's say this month, I want to join December. How much am I supposed to pay? Why thirty dollars? It's prorated. Uh, you know, uh, did you get it? So you're gonna have December here, and then you're gonna pay thirty dollars, right? If I want to jo uh, join, let's say in July. Yes. And the total I'm gonna pay is. Forty-two fifty. Forty-two Now, if I want to join, let's say in April, that's how much do I have to pay? Forty-five dollars. Forty-five dollars and 20. plus twenty. Sixty-five dollars. If you charter, it's also sixty-five. But there's also an exception. We need to support the club too. We need to pay for printing. 
we need to pay for the ribbons. What are those called? Club deuce. Club deuce. And where does that go? In the gray area. In the gray area, yes. So if you look at it, we're going to go over this real quick. The international fees and dues, let's say uh, in October? 45. 45. We put $45 in the first line. Is everybody following? Uh, new officers, uh, keep note. The club new member fee. What is this club new member fee? That's the $20. $20, right? No. Yes. Yeah. Cl cl club new member fee. No, a new, cl new club member fee in the club box has to do with an individual club charging a one-time fee for something extra in the club. For instance, Stage masters rent is very, very high. Oh, yeah. I, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I see it. International fees and dues. So that's actually 65. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. The uh, U Club member fee. Uh, please go on. So uh, Stage Masters has a really high rent, and so we defray it a little bit by a one-time charge of $10 mm -hmm. for every new member. There you go. And what are the club dues? Four dollars a month. Some clubs would charge a dollar a month, and these are used for printing materials, buying ribbons. They're also used for paying rent. And paying rent. Seventeen dollars a, mm -hmm. a month. That's good because I know Warner Center is almost two hundred dollars every six months. They do it in Marriott with Rose Lane. So, <laughs> you guys ever hear here of Warner Center? You probably have, yeah. They're, you do the, they're almost $200 every six months. Because each meeting, I think, costs them about $400. Wow. So it's, yeah, so so they do pay a lot. Uh, club, uh, total payment to the club. That's about $33 a month, About $33 a month, yes. Um, lastly, is I want my membership to begin on... Why is this important? Yes, that's fine. <laughs> so that uh, it's very clear to the new member what, what amount of dues they're paying so that when you charge them for April, they can't say, wait, I just paid for all of it. Exactly. And you have proof that they only paid for four months. Exactly. And another instance says, here's my application, but I'm going to be on vacation for the next month, can we start it on the month after that? We clear? Now let's go to the second page. Sponsor or new reinstated or dual member. Uh, what do I mean by sponsor? The sponsor is the person who invited that person to the club meeting. Uh -huh. Or the person who was instrumental in getting that person to come. If the there's no individual inviting them, it would be the person who put up the social media posting or the vice president of membership who called them on the phone to remind them. Whoever was instrumental in getting that person to the meeting is responsible. There you go. And why do we want to put this in there? So I can get a ribbon, I mean a Pin that says 10 new members. There you go. <laughs> so we, we, we get a couple, uh, those pastors would set us award, like there's one which says like sponsored five members mm -hmm. or three members. So it's a little bit of recognition, a little bit of recognition or pat on the back. On the back. So that's a good thing. So it means you brought in a lot of new members. Because if I'm going to bring a friend of mine, I want to make sure I sponsor them and not the vice president of membership because they had nothing to do with a friend of mine, right? So th this is all that is, exactly. So a little bit of story. I, we've just chartered a new club, right? Uh, executive Minds. One of the applications, it was a little bit messy so instead of filling in the charter application, they submitted 
a regular membership application. It works too. And guess what they did? They became a sponsor. On the second page, almost all of the applications was one person. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but I found it a little bit, uh, a little bit too greedy. <laughs> right? On the application, it was just this person's name. I was like, okay. But they don't really get credit for it. Why? Because it's a charter. A charter, it, it, it means it, it, it's a new club. So, a new club, yeah, uh, screensaver, sorry. So, it's a new club, you don't get credit for it. But we're going to talk about that later. Next, very important. Who knows what I'm getting at? Very important. This is what we need. If not, we can't process the application. Signature, yes. We need the signature and date. If the member wants a copy of this, we need one more signature. The Club officer signature. Above it, real quick, we're going to go over this in just a few minutes will be your preferences if you want to receive mail uh, communication from Toastmasters. This is a good practice. If a new member joins in, how many of you would run an induction ceremony? Not much. But it's a good practice once you're voted in to have them read a Toastmasters promise. Does everybody see that portion? Toastmasters promise, that way they s remain committed to the club. Uh, next page. Payment information. Again, it's pretty self-explanatory. These are only for any credit card, check or money order payments, and for record keeping. Now, once you submit their payments, process everything, what happens to this form? Should be destroyed. Should be destroyed. Just the third page. Just the third page. And what happens to the, the first, first page, first form? You need to keep it. For how long? I don't know exactly, but <laughs> I think it's forever. For <laughs> Legally, this is what we do with other documents, it's two years. Okay. I'm not sure how long Toastmasters has it, but just to keep with standards, it's two years. Two years. And who keeps it? To be the secretary. There you go. Who helps the member fill this up? The close. It's any officer. But then after you fill this out, this goes to the treasurer who then processes it online. And then once it's done, secretary does record keeping. This is very important. Every officer should know how to fill in an application. It could, I know it can be a little bit confusing, especially the portion of the membership dues, but if you review this like one more time, we'll, we'll get through it. 